Thanks again, Joey. Uh, our next talk, just before the... <laughs> oh, you can just start if you want me to leave. Um, just before the, the panel discussion is by uh, Michael or Ma Michael Anka. He's going to speak about DataLab beyond Git connecting to the rest of the world. And Michael is uh, kind of the second, also uh, dual founder of DataLab, and is based at the research center Jülich in Germany, where he leads the psychoinformatics group. And his work is fueled by the desire to prove people wrong that say things like, this cannot be done. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> now I know. All right, so um, thank you to the previous speakers for, for uh, you know, homing in on the topic. And, and I think this, this connects uh, in interesting ways. Um, I want to start off with the, the acknowledgements. Uh, you've seen a, a variant of that slide already. Um, the everything that we're talking about here in terms of data light is now uh, it, there's not just a software surface and functionality surface but there's also a huge people surface um, I haven't counted in a long time but it has been over a hundred people that contributed in any sort of way to the, the data lit um, ecosystem uh, besides the money and the uh, the various initiatives that that started to trust at some point to, uh, to, to use that system. And it's really important because it enables this whole thing, right? It's, there's the money thing, but there's also the, why am I doing this and not something else? Um, okay, so uh, a, a few bits on, on, on the mindset um, that you know, where this talk is coming from. So for me, um, vertical control um, is, is not just a technical tool, but it's also a safety layer and organizer around processes and people. It makes me, do things and not fear that something goes wrong. It makes me also trust people to the degree that they need to be trusted, but without, you know, verification possibilities, right? So that's nice. And and everything that, that we do, um, that I do, is, is basically a collaborative process. So this is, is at the very core interacting with people, interacting with, with uh, external entities, uh, and, and without that there's no, no innovation. And at the same time, uh, I'm really, really interested in, in doing things sustainably. And, and that, at the very least, means I can do it twice. And, you know, in all flavors of, of, of doing it twice. And many things that are happening in, in, academia, in academia that you can watch that are celebrated as an invention, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it, I doubt that they could be done twice. And, and, and so, so doing less and trusting and being on a foundation that you can trust is, is really important to me. And so data light in some sense is, is a productivity tool for a distributed world where the expertise is distributed, people are distributed, <coughs> services are distributed, anything's distributed and really wants to uh, root itself in, in the whole ways of the workings of the free software uh, movement. So um, I want to present you the data -led world model as it has been so far and, and in principle, and I, I hope you, you already got the impression, data -led is pretty much an orchestrator for Git and Git Annex, right? So in, in, uh, if, you, if you read the handbook, if you, if you listen to the talks, then the way uh, we, we present data -led, it's basically data -led data set is a Git repo that has a Git Annex. And, and if you use data let, then it, it, it calls the right commands in, in Git and Git Annex to do the data let thing, right? But basically, there are two worlds inside it that are nested. Um, that is the Git world and there's the Git Annex world. And interestingly, the Git world is much smaller than the Git Annex world. And you've heard about the, the special remote protocols, etc. right? So Git Annex can essentially talk to the internet, right, as, as a whole. Uh, there are some places that it can't talk to, but most places it can talk to, and the other places you can simply implement that little thing and then it talks to them too. So that's really cool. And, but, but that basic setup also comes with, um, with some questions that, that need to be answered, and, uh, and they're actually quite a lot, right? So where does the stuff go? Where does the Git stuff go? Where does the data stuff go? How are they connected? How they are orchestrated? If I put, you know, Git, the repository part, which is which is essentially just information on what is the data and where is it, right? And then I need to deposit the data, and then I need to take care of who gets access to which part of it under which conditions. Then those need to be synchronized. So, in in from the data led 
perspective, it's really nice that there's Git and there's Git Annex. From the data led user perspective, it's actually really complicated, right? And everybody who's tried that, setting up a system that really works with people and existing workflows knows that it's complicated, right? So, and, and, and there are a bunch of, you know, solutions that you can, you can recommend. Uh, one of the solutions is just put them in the same place, right? If you only use one system, um, for for the, the basically metadata parts of it and and the data then everything becomes simple and you can do you know self-hosted git repositories with an annex right git annex supports that natively and then data led is just a little bit of icing on the uh, on the cake there's really nothing else to worry about you could use uh, something like git lfs um, which please don't uh, take that as a recommendation I don't like it at all I think it's 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 not suitable for for the the data flows uh, that that we observe and then of course there are systems uh, that happen to also settle on the same uh, principle so for example the 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 gin repository um, that you could you could roll out yourself is basically a, a gox with git annex support and that's it's really popular and I suspect it's really popular because it solves that you know, complexity problem, right? You do have one thing, uh, unfortunately also comes with its own complexities. So, but it's, 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 a, nice, uh, it's a nice solution. Sadly, uh, it, it's limiting, right? So the Git part, as I mentioned already, the Git world is much smaller than the Git Annex world, right? So, so if, you're, if you're recommending the system, just to use, use something that can deal with Git and Git Annex simultaneously, then you're excluding more or less the entire cloud storage world, which is, um, which is, something that most institutions provide to, to, to their members. So that would be the easy thing that you don't have to worry about because it's given to you as a, as a service or they have uh, Git services that are just, you know, Git for code because they can't deal with anything sizable um, and so on, right? So uh, Joey mentioned already Git NX export, but that's just a handover, basically a deposit for people to consume the thing and is withholding most of the advantages that you get if your if your data is uh, tracked by by Git Annex. So um, and then DataLite provides a solution to that. So we have an orchestration layer where you can say, well, I know all these places, right? And if you push here, then it also synchronizes that one. But but again, it's it's just paving over the complexity that is inside, in some sense. So is that good enough? No, right? And, 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 and sometimes in the documentation you see as an advantage, well, if you separate the metadata from the actual data, then you can also separate the access and that gives you more fine-grained control about you know, whatever the thing. But, but if you think about it, for anyone who needs to get access to the data, it's still, again, just additional complexity because you have to manage that separately, although that might not even be a, a use case for you, right? So the, the, the core of this thing is there is complexity that, that is not very um, desirable. So in the true data led way, and, and Yari called it an abomination, uh, uh, we, we have been going on about this. And, and for a few years now, there is a thing called uh, data led annex. And that is the first Git remote helper that is, uh, that is shipped with, uh, with a data led extension uh, package. And if you don't know what a Git remote helper is, um, you already heard about it, you can just call a thing git something something and then git knows about it right in this case it's git remote i think that's it and then some name and then you can you can start doing things like git push to this thing simply by prefixing uh the the location url with some name in this case it's it's tail at nx colon colon and then something and then it does it all inside whatever it's doing and what this particular git remote helper is doing is it lets git talk over git annex so we're basically if you if you need to deposit a git repository with data data set or any git repository really um, then you can you you can do git fetch and git push operations through git annex so that means you can you can deposit and retrieve data, uh, git repositories from any place that git annex can talk to which is basically any place and, and the way it does that is uh, it exploits basically the entire uh, feature set of, of, of Git Annex. So it, it has a, I think this is this one. So this is, this is what it does inside. I'll just very briefly, um, if you have a local, uh, a local Git repository and you, you, can, you can register a specific uh, remote by URL, and I'll show you a couple of examples in a second to, to, to give you a sense of how uh, widely applicable that is. What it will do is it will maintain a local mirror repository of that remote 
And if you want to actually put that onto the remote, what it will do is it will create yet another Git Annex repository inside that contains two magic keys, XDR, DLRA keys, using a custom Git Annex backend. And for those who think, what is he talking about, right? Uh, this is this is you know usually you can you can see them up there on the, on the left. Usually, um, data blobs, content blobs are Git Annex keys, and they're tracked by some sort of content uh, checksum. This is a magic Git Annex backend that you can implement. We implement it, uh, and it only supports two keys. You can see them up there: refs and repo export. And they will always contain the list of references that are in the Git repository and a compressed um, Git repository, bare Git repository in a zip file, right? So, so they completely violate the usual idea of a backend because their content changes all the time, but their location is always the same. So you can, what you can do, and, and so just to complete that picture, if you, if you fetch, it just reads whatever is up there, compares it to the local state, downloads it, re-extracts it, and then you have two Git, Git processes that run on your local system to talk to each other, and everything will work Git style. You have conflict resolution and whatnot, uh, all the same. And if you, if you upload, it just uploads it, right? That's it. And, and so I'll give you a few, um, few examples of these URLs. I hope you can, uh, you, you can read them. So the, the only thing to understand here is that there is a complex URL, and then you can do git push and git fetch. That's, that's the basic message. And what you, what, you, what you can see in these URLs is they all start with data at annex dash colon colon, right? That is what trig makes git talk to that special program that is shipped with, with data led. And then the rest of the URL can look really weird in all kinds of ways, but it's basically a URL encoded list of git annex uh, external remote uh, initialization parameters, right? So this whole thing works with any Git Annex remote, the ones that Joey wrote, the, John, the, the ones that we wrote, and the ones that anybody else wrote, right? Because it, 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 it uses those, all the standard interfaces that you've heard about. And so you can, you can, you can uh, deposit a Git repository on a Dataverse uh, in instance, that's the second one, or in, a, in an S3 bucket, or you, you place it somewhere zipped on a, on a web server. So the, the, the possibilities are really infinite, right? This slide doesn't capture uh, the breadth of what you can do, because we don't even know what the full list of Git Annex uh, special remote is that exist. But this is compatible with, with, with all of them. So what this does, I need to check the time, nice. Um, so what this does is this is not a replacement for proper Git hosting, right? So if you're collaborating with 150 people and you do pull requests and whatnot, this is not for you. But what this is good for is you can now deposit the repository part, which is the entire evolution of a data set, right? All the provenance information that we, that we already briefly heard about in the same place where the data is. And you manage it exactly like the rest of the data, those are all annex keys or exported files, right? So this uh, thing also supports export mode. Uh, so you can have a human readable representation of a data set that provides you one or more versions of the data files, including the entire history in terms of metadata. And everybody could be pointed to uh, a URL and they can simply git clone that or data let clone that verbatim, given that they have that uh, extension installed. And that works uh, with Git Annex since uh, many years ago, and it's shipped in the datalet next extension package. So, so, so that's nice. It solves some of the problems. Uh, but if you're if you're thinking about the longevity aspect of all of this, right, then that's uh, on many people's minds. Um, and here is an example uh, threat on on Mastodon that basically comes down to yeah, datalet. It might be the nicest thing that we have in science for for th for for data management, but it's it's really complex and it comes with an uncount uncountable number of Python uh, code, and it's just too much, right? That's I don't want to have that uh, on my shoulders for you know 10, 20 years. So and that's true. Uh, and, and, but if we're thinking about it, the same is true for Git and Git Annex. Joey just, just made a scary statement uh, that went along the lines of, I don't think it, the Git Annex needs to be developed forever, right? And then everybody's shaking in their core that's, that's sitting there. And if, but, but we all know that it's true, right? And also Git, right? Git has been around for a while, but not that long, right? And we don't know how it's going to develop, right? 
people have the, uh, the attitude that it's too, you know, too big to fail and there will be some transition. We just don't know what it is yet. You know, it's all good, right? But you know, imagine finding a CVS repository from 1994 that points to some tape drives now. Good luck making sense out of that, right? And if you, if you think about a Git Annex repository, where you just need to keep in mind that there's this other branch that this tracks all these things and it's related by keys that you just need to keep in mind that they existed to reestablish that connection, then you know, hey, I don't know if that translates 30 years forward, right? Or 50. So I think what this boils down to is that we want to uh, you know, think about data pre preservation demands and have a description optimized record rather than use optimized record. But at the same time, we also want to keep using the technology that we have today because we have actual things to do, right? And, and so this is the future of data led um, uh, as I uh, see it right now and I want to make a call. So the, the, I don't want to spend too much time on this, Five minutes, yes, uh, exactly. I will not spend too much time on this. So the data led that we know is, is in that box in here. I call it the data led runtime data set. And there are things that you can do with data led and git annex uh, on your machine. And then you can do git push pull, interact with all the things, all, everything that you already heard about and many things that you, uh, that you will uh, hear about. And then I think what we should be doing uh, in data in the future is we should we should draw a circle here, and that's why that uh, idea of you know what's the surface, the desired surface of a tool uh, for the for the for the for the future. And I think this is this box that I that I labeled D core. And and the end of that surface should be that you serialize the information that's in that runtime representation, which right now happens to be a Git repository with an annex, into a data description. And that data description is, is a proper metadata record. And the whole point uh, would be, and metadata records have the same problems as the Git repository formats, right? There are so many of them and they all have advantages and disadvantages and there's no one size fits all. So the idea is to be able to serialize out to whatever standard there is, but to have the API be a metadata API. So to have in DataLed uh, a recognized schema, how you can describe things, and then we stick to that schema and have it be versioned like everything else in, in DataLed, and then everybody else can have a translator to whatever is the standard of the day. And that whole system is mirrored also on the other side. So you can, you can have a translation of whatever your favorite standard is into that description schema um, and then you can use data led and git annex and git while they exist. But outside of that system, you will have data files, maybe objects, it doesn't really matter, they sit somewhere, and you have a uh, standardized, probably textual uh, description of the information that's in there that is relevant to you. And that might be a subset of what's, what's in, the, in the runtime version. And when the lifetime of that runtime data led data set ends for you, it could be different, right? It could be you know, after five minutes at the end of a compute job, or it could be after 10 years after you finally abandon a project, right? It, it doesn't matter, but, but there is an end of, of life for, for everyone. So, and that metadata schema is a key, uh, a key aspect here. And if, you, if you're brave enough, you could go to concepts.data.org and see it evolve. So it's, it has the version unreleased right now, and that's for a reason. But the idea is basically there is a schema definition, and it's a schema. It's not a, an ontology, vocabulary, et cetera. Many, many people are working on this for decades, right? So it's, it, there, there's nothing that needs to be touched. We just need to agree on a particular structure of that information to come out in order to be able to develop software that, that really works fast enough. And uh, it's fully, you know, annotated, so you can you can RDF uh, serialize it, and it, it sits on uh, on a on a few very few um, you know standardized um, ways of composing metadata from the um, from ProfO to to DCAT uses a tool called um, LinkML. And what it can do is it can capture the, 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 the actual complexity of a multi-version data -led data set in the form of a Git repository. So it basically, it's some sort of an alternative for Git, Git's fast export. In some, it's not, it's not, I take that back, it's not an alternative, but conceptually it's similar to that. Uh, and, and, and what makes it different from others is that the primary entity being described is file content. 
right? It's not the usual, here we have a data set and then this is parts and parts and parts and parts, but the, the primary content is uh, a file blob, right? So the, one, of the, one of the thought uh, models was that it should fit into Git Annex's metadata system, right? Without having to have a negotiation with, uh, with, with Joey. It should just fit right in there. And that's, uh, that's what it does. The, um, the other uh, aspect, and I need to be quick, is that everything has a globally unique identifier. And there are some shortcuts that are made in there that actually makes this practically feasible. So you don't need to talk to a registry and, and all that in order to compose these, uh, these metadata things. This is too small. So I'm, what it shows it that there's a metadata record up top there, and maybe I can be really quick. No, I cannot be quick. Uh, that contains no identifiers. What you, what it, maybe you check the slides later on. Uh, what it shows is that without specifying any versions, uh, et cetera, in a record that you would store in a data, like data set, you can serialize out an RDF report that could go into a graph store for data uh, discovery and, and, and all that, that contains properly versioned records that allow you to identify things across evolving uh, uh, data sets all the time. And, and there are uh, examples online that show you how to do that for blo git blobs, trees, commits, annex keys, annex remotes, data data sets, publications, studies, subjects, research topics, instruments, whatever, uh, without actually blowing up the number of uh, metadata classes that you need to have in, 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 in order to do that. So as I said, that's, uh, that's work in progress, but what I want to end with is the idea that what this does, it, it reduces the complexity of interfacing with, with data led. So we basically settle on two relevant interfaces only. One is purely metadata, right? So if we can translate a metadata record to that schema and back, then we're compatible with whatever other discovery system that is out there, and there are quite a few. And the other one is the Git Annex Special Remote Protocol, because we can describe what what that thing needs to be doing in terms of this is the piece of software that lets you talk to this when you give it that identifier, right? So we need to take care of the Git Annex Special Remote Protocol and we need to take care of that schema development and, and they are both non-data-led in some sense and they can be understood without having to understand data-led. And that is what I meant by you know, a smaller, more trustworthy foundation. I'm not saying that I don't trust data-led, I, I do since 2015 uh, and but but having to take care of less is 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 trustworthy more trustworthy and with that change we also change the uh, the requirements for what an optimal system is that can host that type of information and we change it to something that most institutions uh, and even the commercial cloud already has right we we need to put a file content blob somewhere and we need to be able to attach metadata to it, and that attachment could just be by referencing a second blob somewhere in that same system, right? And that's, and that's it. And at the same time, we stay compatible with the Git, 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 Git Annex world in the exact same way, and you can use uh, and be in that ecosystem for as long as it's beneficiary uh, or beneficial uh, to you. And with that, I want to end that and um, not take up more time for our uh, discussion. Thank you.